Here we're going to do a brake job on a 2004 Mazda 6. Some brake jobs are really easy, some a little more complicated. This one's not too awful bad. Standard bolts, I think. I'm taking the caliper off. I should have to take also the um, uh, brake pad uh, housing off. And in this case, this one's got uh, screws that uh, kind of set the rotor. Some of them is you have to use an impact uh, driver to uh, get those off. First off, you always should always make sure your pads match. And I kind of check the shape of them and stuff. And it looks like they're pretty much it. So I'm going to spray the back of these pads with a, uh, an anti-squealer spray in the rotors. I have set it up there and looked at it and made sure that all of it uh, matches up. So now we're good to go and start taking the part and uh, placing the parts. Okay, you pull this little cap off. It keeps stuff from getting into the Torx bolt. And on this year it takes a T50 uh, Torx bit. And it's only one bolt on the caliper. It's the bottom one. A lot of calipers have two bolts. Mazda brake designs. It has one actual bolt pin and it slides on the other pin. So if you'll, you'll pull it off and slide it out. You'll see here in just a second. Okay, now I've got the uh, bolt undone and pulled out enough to remove. Then what I took is a screwdriver and kind of put it down there against the rotor and pulled. And what I'm doing there, when I'm pulling, I'm pulling against this caliper, squishing the piston into it. That kind of releases its hold on the pads. So then it allows the caliper to slide up. Now I've got a little bit of resistance it's because the brake line is bolted up there, and I'll have to uh, release it so that it'll come forward. So, Okay, I've taken the brake line loose from its holder off the strut right here. There's a 12 millimeter bolt. And then I've just let it come around the strut some, and I've let the caliper slide forward all, you know, to where this clears the pad. Then you just slide it forward and carefully let it hang. And then you can leave the pads, especially if you're going to change rotor like I'm going to do here, you can leave the pads on there. But uh, we'll have to take the, the pad harness, the brace that holds the pads right here, Let's take it loose. And it's two, and I'm guessing 17 millimeter bolts back here. I'll find out here in just a second. Okay, I've removed The bracket that holds the uh, brake pads, you see that, in, that outer pad is pretty thin or so. Now I've got to get these screws out to remove the rotor and I'll use one of these. It's an impact screwdriver with the right bit to fit in there. Twist it like you're going to, you can put a good grip and a good twist on it. Impact it and box those screws loose. Okay, when you get new rotors, they put a coating on them to keep them from rusting and stuff while they sit on the shelf. You can use carburetor cleaner, brake cleaner, lacquer thinner, but something something that's fairly strong of a solvent. Almost out of this. Granted, your brake pads can burn it right off, but uh, no sense in taking a chance of gumming them up or making them start wearing funny. You clean both sides. It's not required to clean the center piece. It's the center part of the rotor. Okay. Okay, I've slipped the new rotor on, they just slip right up there. And I put the screws back in. Now I've reversed my impact driver just by twisting it in the tightening direction. Now you want to impact them on.
keep in mind those screws don't hold the rotor on. Your wheel and lug nuts do, but that's to kind of keep it in place. And actually, it's kind of nice because it makes the rotor stay right in position. So when you go to slide the pads and stuff on, it doesn't wiggle around. A lot of times the rotor will wiggle and it'll make the pads pop back out of the the uh, harness it's in. Yeah, so this makes it kind of nice. Now the next step is to compress the caliper. Okay, this is a a piston compression tool to uh, com push the piston back into the uh, caliper. Okay, so if I can get in here with this, this is your bracket that holds the uh, brake pads, and they just slide in. These clips. These are in pretty good shape, so they'll, you know, I would replace them, but he said he didn't really care about spending the money on it. So, but they just slide in. Like so, and you'll be putting the new ones on like this. But I can get it held in there in the camera view. Anyways, uh, what I wanted to point out here with this is, notice this is the, the squealer uh, tab. When the brake pad gets so thin, this little piece of metal right here will start running on the rotor and squeal, especially when you use the brakes. And that's what indicates, hey, I need brakes. So when you take the brakes apart, be sure to keep in mind where that is and uh, just don't just start things off and start throwing them around. Kind of do things one at a time in a systematic uh, process and that way you can keep up with what's going on. So I will uh, compress the piston next and I'll show you how this works. What I'll normally do is I'll take a pad and I usually take the one without the squealer on it. That way it doesn't get in the way of anything. I'll just set it in there. It's a good piece to use. You can use a C-clamp, like woodwork or anything like that as well. And usually if the caliper is in good shape and doesn't need to be replaced or need to be rebuilt, this little small handle is all it takes to push it back in. It shouldn't take anything major. If you've got to use something major to squish that piston in, then you possibly have problems. And also a rule of thumb is never do both sides. Don't have both calipers off at the same time compressing them in because you can pop the other piston out. Depending how the brake lines are set up, it's got any check valves in it. But especially the older cars about it. If you had both calipers sitting there with no pads in it, nothing, nothing not against the rotor, and you squeezed one piston in, it popped out the other one out on the other side. So now the piston's compressed, that way you have full room, range to uh, put your pads on with. And I'll let it sit right back down there. Now we're going to put the uh, this piece back on. And you can either put the pads on beforehand or after. Uh, to me, that doesn't really make a difference. Okay, a little note. There's a little, let me see, get a screw over here. There is this little spring part of that clip right there. See it? It's part of this clip that runs here. That keeps the pad from vibrating, keeps the squealing and noise down. When you go to put this pad in, especially when they're real thick, you see they're almost flush with that. It'll want to get caught behind that lip of that pad. You just have to kind of wiggle around, make sure that you get it caught, and then spring in, it goes right in. Always inspect your boots for your pins. Make sure they're not cracked. You can get hard work yet if they are. And that, what that does is keeps the grease and stuff on the pins clean and uh, keeps it from uh, getting hung up. Because if the pins hung up, hang up, it'll squeeze the brake pads, but then uh, it won't release it. Or sometimes it won't put the brakes on at all, but uh, you always want to make sure those pins are good and uh, greased up and slide real well kind of hard to do one-handed but now it's ready just to slide push that pin back it's in place and it's ready for me to tighten down I'll have to let go of the camera so I'm gonna do the brake job <laughs> but there you go it's pretty much how the brakes go on okay I've tightened up the upper pin so don't forget to put your little cap back on to help protect it clean it kind of just snaps in there and it turns and it's, it's snug. And don't forget to reroute your uh, brake line back. It kind of goes under and catches them 
the holes line up and I'll put the nut in there and tighten it down and then and as a number one rule whenever you do your brakes on your car before you go and road test or whatever go in there and pump the brake until you have a brake pedal because when you squish the piston it's not going to grab the brakes I have actually seen people put the brakes on the car jump in and go to take off and realize they don't have a brake pedal because the time it takes you to start pumping the brake to get a brake you don't have one and then he'll crash into something.